Hi, I am Basil Asaf, and welcome back to Pathology Dynamics. Today we will talk about a well-known disease that affects birds, that is Newcastle disease. Newcastle disease is caused by Newcastle disease virus, which belongs to the genus Avulovirus, which belongs to the family Paramyxoviridae. And if you remember from our previous videos, canine distemper virus also belongs to Paramyxoviridae. However, it belongs to the Morbilli viruses. We can see in this phylogenetic tree that canine distemper, along with render Pest and pestid de petites ruminants, as well as measles virus, are grouped together. However, Ebola virus, including Newcastle disease virus, are a little bit distant, but at the same time, all belong to the pyramids of Viridae family. And it's important to recognize this comparative aspect because knowing that Newcastle disease virus belongs to the same family as canine distemper virus will give you a quick hint that Newcastle disease virus is capable of infecting different tissues and that intracytoplasmic and intranuclear viral inclusion bodies are expected features as we will see later on in this video. Newcastle disease virus has many serotypes and serotypes mean that there are slight differences in the proteins that results in different antibody responses. The most common serotype that causes the most severe disease and mortalities is avian paramyxovirus serotype 1. However, for simplification, all serotypes were divided into three groups depending on disease severity they cause. There is the villogenic most virulent type and it's subdivided into to viscerotropic virus or neurotropic. Viscerotropic affects the gastrointestinal tract and causes hemorrhage and necrosis, and the neurotropic causes necrosis in the central nervous system as well as respiratory disease. Mesogenic group moderate virulence and lentogenic are either low virulent or not virulent at all. And most recently, these three groups has been subdivided into just two main groups, either virulent Newcastle disease virus or low virulence Newcastle disease virus. The virus can be transmitted by aerosols, nasal secretions, and feces from infected animals. As we mentioned, Newcastle disease virus can affect several organs, which results in diverse clinical signs and gross findings at necropsy. In this example here, we can see torticollis, which is turning of the head caused by Newcastle disease, conjunctival hemorrhage, edema of the head, necrosis of the oropharyngeal and esophageal mucosa with the formation of the theoretic membrane, proventricular hemorrhage. You can see multifocal areas of hemorrhage. Here's another example. As well as necrosis and hemorrhage in the intestinal wall and lymphoid tissues such as cecal tonsils. Here's another example. And birds will typically present with green diarrhea. This is the histopathology from the brain of a parrot infected with Newcastle disease virus. I highly encourage you before you review this case that you go back to the canine distemper encephalitis we described previously and I'm going to put the link for it here so you can compare the encephalitis and the canine distemper and how similar it is here in the parrot with Newcastle disease virus. And as we mentioned in canine distemper virus, the lesion is essentially demyelination and neuronal degeneration and necrosis, as well as the formation of intranuclear and intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies. And we will also see, just like any viral disease, perivascular cuff, which are mononuclear cells of lymphocytes and macrophages filling the vercal robe in space. We can see here the there are multifocal areas of lighter color neuropel, and this is due to the demyelination. And if we look at higher magnification, we can appreciate areas of hemorrhage, as well as demyelination. There is also getter cells, as well as reactive astrocytes, which are called gemistocytic astrocytes. We can also see swollen axons, and those are dystrophic and degenerating axons, and are called spheroids. Here is one, two, three, four, and five spheroids in this view. The slight quality here is not the best to view and find the intranuclear inclusions and intracytoplasmic inclusions, so I will just use snapshot images acquired from the Joint Pathology Center website of the same case. As we mentioned that paramyxoviruses are among the few viruses capable of causing intranuclear and intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies at the same time. We can see in this example here intranuclear inclusion, and here is a larger magnification of it, and we can see here a cell containing both intranuclear nuclear and intracytoplasmic inclusions. And here is a higher magnification of it. We can see the multiple intranuclear and intracytoplasmic eosinophilic inclusion bodies. I hope you get advantage of this case and start to train yourself about the comparative aspect of disease, in which in this case we saw both viruses belonging to the same family but different genus and infect different species, yet the histopathology has a great overlap between the two diseases in the brain. As always, special thanks 
thanks to this Joint Pathology Center for providing these slides. And if you like this video, please hit the like button and make sure you view the previous videos, especially the canine distemper encephalitis and rabies as well. And don't forget to spread the knowledge by sharing this video with friends and colleagues who may benefit from it. And please subscribe to the channel so you can receive all the new videos. Thank you.